Question 2. A student investigates the rate of reactions between zinc reacts uh, with the HCl. This is the equation. Zinc reacts with HCl form the H2 gas and the salt solution. And the student used the following method. Uh, weight uh, 1 gram of this zinc foil accurately uh, and add the uh, acid 50 cm cube of uh, 2 mole per dm cube acid into the conical flask. And after that, uh, add the zinc foil to the uh, 50 cm cube of the HCl uh, in the flask. Immediately start the timer. Stop the timer when 20 cm cube of H2 has been collected. Repeat step 1 to step 4 using a lower concentration of HCl. Okay, means not 2, but lower than that. Um, so you should uh, draw something like this uh, for the part A. Complete uh, this uh, uh, figure 2.1 to show apparatus that the student can be collect, uh, can use to collect the hydrogen gas. Um, first, you must draw the zinc foil uh, that uh, uh, inside a container. Uh, actually, you can okay, you can draw something like this in a small container. Uh, make sure uh, they not really react first. Uh, so we can let these two react when you kind of like swirl this, uh, or you can mix it uh, when you want to start the reaction. Or you can actually draw another one like uh, the boat, the boat. Okay, so the zinc foil in the weighing boat. After that, uh, when you want to start the reaction, you can just uh, swirl the, the solution. Uh, and another one, you must make sure the apparatus is uh, is uh, is uh, sealed, no leakage. So something like this, and must uh, must be a tube from the this uh, conical flask. Okay, make sure the stopper is there. Okay, so from this uh, conical flask, so the gas can uh, can get into the gas trench. So uh, we can use gas trench in this uh, experiment because one gas produced. Uh, okay, just draw the gas trench something like this. Uh, so uh, that, that's what you need to do, right? Um, okay, it's quite easy drawing. Part B. The student wants to perform a similar experiment using 0.1. Okay, just now is uh, 2 mole per dm cube. Uh, now is uh, 0 0.1 mole per dm cube. Uh, describe how the student should make a standard solution of 250 cm cube of 0 0.1 mole per dm cube using 2 mole per dm cube HCl. Um, before you plan, uh, at least you must uh, calculate the volumes that needed. Uh, I mean volumes of the these uh, 2 mole per dm cube HCLs that needed. So you just use the M1V1 equal to M2V2. Uh, so M2V2 is the one we want to prepare. Um, so it's 0 0.1, okay, 250. And initial concentration is 2 mole per dm cube. Okay, so we know that we're going to use or take 12.5 cm cube of the, from this solution. Okay, once you get this volume, uh, then you can start to plan. Uh, and of course, you have to include all this. Uh, so you can... You can uh, use the more accurate apparatus. Okay, so let's start. Um, take 12.5 cm cube, this one, from 2 mole per dm cube hexial solution uh, using burette. Uh, it's better to use burette because now it's not really like 25 cm cube. So burette can, uh, you can measure 12.5, 13.5, 14.5. Actually, pipette also can, but uh, we, we prefer burette. Uh, it's, uh, it's more suitable. And after that, uh, transfer the acid solution, uh, this one, to 250 cm cube volumetric flux. So it must be volumetric flux. Because this one is used to prepare a standard solution. Okay, do not use a uh, measuring cylinder. Uh, must use the volumetric flux. And after that, top up the uh, the the solution, okay, the or the the volumetric flask, okay, to the calibration mark, okay. Actually, it's the top up the solutions lah. Uh. So top up the solution uh, to the calibration mark 
Uh, for this uh, volumetric flask, normally you will see uh, one mark on the neck, this one. Uh, this is a calibration mark. So we just add distilled water uh, to the, uh, this, uh, into this uh, flask, top up the solution, and uh, after that, uh, uh, we just, uh, okay, last, last step is we put a stopper, okay, put a stopper. After that, invert and shake the flask to homogenize the solution. Right, so uh, another thing you need to remember is top up the solution uh, to the calibration mark with distilled water. Okay, must must use distilled water. Um, part C. The student carries out the further experiment using higher concentration of HCl, means more than two. Uh, so in this table is uh, until six mol per dm cube. Uh, part one, the student wears chemically resistant gloves when using 6 mol per dm cube HCl. Why? Uh, it's quite easy uh, because it's a strong acid and some more is concentrated, therefore it's corrosive. Part 2, the student obtains the result in the table 2.1. Uh, so in this uh, experiment, 1 over T can be considered to be proportional to the initial rate of reaction. So it means this one can represent the, this uh, rate of reaction. Uh, complete the table by calculating 1 over T. Uh, so very easy. So T is already given, means the time taken to collect 20 cm cube of H2. So uh, the more concentrated one is actually uh, is faster, right? So it's a five point two four second. So we just use a uh, one over time. So uh, let's say first one one over fifteen point six two. We get this. Do the same thing for the rest. You get all these values. Okay. So this is very easy. Uh, and of course we know that when concentration increase, therefore the rate also increase, right? The value is larger. And of course make sure it's three SF. Okay. So it means uh, all these values must be three SF. Um, part 3. Use your data in the table 2.1. Produce a sketch uh, against the concentration uh, in this, uh, the, cash, uh, the rate against the concentration in figure 2.2. This one. Uh, it is not necessary to include a scale uh, on the, this axis. Uh, so just label as A, this one. Uh, so just draw one line okay, from initial. Uh, so because concentration increased, Rate also increase, isn't it? So therefore, you just draw one straight line. Okay, positive gradient. Okay, that's all. So let's say A is here. Part four. On this uh, figure two point two, sketch a second line to show the graph of concentration uh, against uh, rates. Uh, if the powder uh, powder zinc is used, uh, for the A is uh, is the zinc foil. But uh, let's say now, the line B is for the powder zinc. Powder zinc is, has higher surface because it's a smaller particle. So the surface area okay, is higher. Therefore, it's actually faster. So you need to draw another line. Okay, let's say B. Uh, make sure it's deeper than the A uh, because powder uh, is uh, react faster than the foil, right? So this one. Part five. Using your data in table two point one, deduce the rates uh, equation for the reactions between zinc and HCl. Um, this one you need to compare the concentration and rate. Okay, uh, just use one example. Uh, let's say we use two to four. When the concentration double, let's say to form two to four, uh, the rate is actually double, zero point zero six four to zero point one two eight. So we are quite sure that it's first order, uh, because uh, concentration double, rate is double. So the rate equation is therefore this one, rate equal to K constant times the concentration of HCl. Part D at higher concentration. Uh, than those uh, shown in table 2.1 means more than 6 significant temperature increases uh, occur uh, part 1 suggests how the line A in the figure 2.1 would be different 
at those higher temperature or oh, this one um, okay for this one we know that is a uh, is a straight line but if we use higher concentration higher concentration uh, it won't be uh, a straight line because uh, the temperature actually increases is increased a lot much higher highly exothermic so therefore higher temperature also will increase the rate the rate won't be linear it will be uh, increased exponentially therefore uh, at higher temperature you see a curved sorry at higher concentration means after the six uh, mol per dm cube you might get a curve which move upwards right okay the reason very easy because uh, the temperature increase eventually will increase the rate okay exponentially um, suggest one way which the temperature increase may minimized uh, the standard answer of course is use the water bath la, right so because the water bath can make the temperature uh, constant means uh, if it's too hot the water bath can absorb the heat and uh, make sure it's not too high temperature uh, so this is a standard answer water bath can lower the temperature if the temperature is too high uh, uh, or actually you can use this one use lesser zinc or use larger volume larger volume means uh, the the water amount is more so it can absorb the heat uh, that produce uh, when it's too concentrated uh, of course the best answer is the first one uh, use water baths uh, to to maintain the temperature or to keep the temperature constant Part E. For part E, the zinc foil has an oxide layer. Suggest how oxide layer can be removed before weighing the zinc foil. Uh, very easy. Uh, we just use the sandpaper to polish the zinc foil. So the oxide layer can remove easily. Part 2. Uh, this is a quite uh, challenging one. Uh, if the student does not remove oxide layer, the initial rate is lower than uh, expected or it should be. Explain why initial rate of reaction is lower than it should be. Uh, first, you need to understand how the rates are being measured. Uh, from this table, we know that it's the time taken to collect 20 cm cube of H2. Means when it's reached 20 cm cube, then we stop the timing. So means if there is the zinc oxide, the H2 gas form is actually lesser. That's a meaning. So uh, let's get back to this part. Uh, so it's just because when the zinc oxide is there, the zinc oxide will react with acid and it will not really produce gas. So means uh, no gas, then the time taken will be affected. Because this one will just form H2O, not H2. If, if after we polish the zinc foil, the oxide removed, then the zinc will react with acid, produce gas. So we can get the more accurate rates of reaction. So that's the reason why zinc oxide and HCl doesn't produce hydrogen gas at the start. That's the reason. Okay, that's all. Thank you.